In today's video, we are taking a look at magnesium, a highly flammable metal, melting it down and turning it into liquid sunlight. Hey, Nate. You make fun of me for having too much of the same thing. What on earth? <laughs> Nate. I've seen these before. Yeah, do you know what this is? I'm pretty sure Grant got these when he was trying to make his aluminum foundry years ago. He did, but this isn't aluminum. It's not. This is magnesium. These are magnesium rods. That's actually something that, as far as I understand, uh, you were telling me this, that magnesium is used in uh, aircraft quite a bit because it's lightweight and strong. I'm not so sure if it's used as much anymore, but I know historically yeah. it has been and it may still be used for some things, but yes, very That's light, very strong similar to aluminum in weight. Except, oh. you can hear it, it's very brittle. It's also a little bit different than some metals. I'll let you go ahead and break that. Uh, I, I can't. can't tell if you're breaking the metal or your hands. I heard it like complaining a little. So magnesium is actually a chemical element and it is atomic number 12. And the interesting thing about it is it's metal, but it's highly flammable which of course makes it one of my favorite metals. Once you get this stuff burning, it burns at about 3,000 degrees Celsius, which is really hot. You can actually get this to ignite at a fairly low temperature at about 800 degrees Fahrenheit, but after that, it's gonna skyrocket up. Once it starts burning, there's almost no way to put it out. I think one of the hardest parts of actually getting it to burn is that you have to kind of get all of it up to temperature in, a, in an area. And it conducts heat pretty well, so if you start hitting it with a blowtorch in one spot, it's gonna take a while because it's gonna be drawing a lot of that heat away. You really have to get a fairly large percent up to temperature before it will ignite. Uh, and it will often start to melt before it ignites. So usually when you're using magnesium to intentionally start a fire, you're gonna use something small like little shavings of it like we've got here or strips of thin ribbons of magnesium. You've actually seen Grant do this on the channel before. He took a strip of magnesium ribbon, he lit it on fire, and he actually put it between two pieces of dry ice. So there are a few things we wanna to try today. I did get some dry ice. We are going to be uh, melting some of this down because it is pretty amazing to see. So let's show you guys what it does. Here's the basic idea. We have a lot of magnesium and a few different experiments we want to try with it. Flash powder, putting it into water, igniting it with thermite, and melting it down. Starting off with lighting this much is just a bad idea. We've got the powder. Tell you what. Oh, a tiny little bit. Just, just as an example of how bright this stuff is. Now, we're actually going to be wearing uh, welding masks for quite a bit of what we're doing, but let's, uh, let's light this piece up first, just to give an example of what this can do. Okay, that was very bright, but it's just like a flare. And what's left is basically magnesium oxide, a little bit of carbon. Um, magnesium oxide is actually a supplement that people will take. Got a slightly bigger piece. There you go. I'm gonna try this one. <laughs> On camera, that basically just looks like a white spot with no definition in it because it's so bright. In real life, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> it's a bright white spot, just glowing pure white. I'm wearing sunglasses and I still look through it and it's still just this glowing white spot. And I think it's left a little dot in my vision, so. It's too bright to comfortably look so at. so bright. So that's not just a trick of the camera or a problem filming it, it really does look like that. So as we scale up, we will be switching to welding masks. Anything bigger than those tiny little bits, we don't wanna be looking at with even just sunglasses, it's not enough. Nope, but I do want to kind of show you how flash powder itself works as well. Again, just magnesium dust. Go ahead and uh, light that and lock it. Insanely bright, insanely white sparkles. Is this the stuff that did burn or the stuff that didn't burn? I think you've got a mix there. The, the ash that you're sort of seeing, that is magnesium oxide. That's the leftover remnants that have already burned. Anything still silvery, that's just the magnesium that fell through the flames, didn't melt and ignite. So that's a pile of flammable dust. All right, so that was just a handful of dust and two tiny slivers, and that's how bright it was in the studio. And it releases a lot of smoke. So I think we should scale it up because I have a lot more. But perhaps outside? Yeah, okay. 
All right, so we're outside now. We brought some of our magnesium with us. And while we were lighting off just tiny little slivers indoors, we're gonna try an entire rod now, see what happens. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> magic wand. Where's your magic wand, peasant? Lumos. Oh, Nox. <sighs> Dang it. That's a good sign. Yeah. And now I have a magic wand. Well, a lot I didn't of feel like the, a lot of the magic dripped onto the ground. So it's pretty cool to see on fire. Again, really, really hard to see in the daylight and on the camera because it's too bright for us to even see. We're gonna try something else that might make the reaction a little bit more exciting. Callie, what if there's a magnesium fire and I wanna put it out? Can I spray it with water? Gee, Nate, I wonder what you should do. <laughs> that doesn't seem like it's the wisest plan. <laughs> Guys. You do not use water or even a normal fire extinguisher for that matter to put out a metal fire. You actually need what's called a class D fire extinguisher and that kind of gives you an example as to why. We've burned it. We've shown what little pieces will do. I want to try and melt down a few of these at the same time. Let's do it. Wow! All right, so in the past we have lit thermite using magnesium sparklers. Now I think we're going to use thermite to light magnesium. But we don't have any sparklers, so we're going to have to use some magnesium to light the thermite to light the magnesium. We've got our small shavings of magnesium, which we're able to light pretty easily with just the blowtorch. Those hopefully will light off the thermite, and the thermite, the goal, is we're going to cover a couple of these sticks, and we're going to see if we can get the entire stick to ignite at the same time, just by coating it in thermite. so warm. Come on. I want to poke it with a stick. I know I shouldn't. So there's still stuff happening. A little bit. Wait for it. Oh, I see a glowing spot. Couple glowing spots. Lift off! Gee, that worked not at all. Guys, you can't use water to put out metal fires. Holy That's cow. how we lost the bush. Okay, Nate, so, uh, so how's this working out for you, putting out a metal fire with water? In terms of putting out the fire, it did not work very well. It sort of got it overexcited and it it around spread it around. Spreading it putting it out. But in terms of how freaking awesome it was, <laughs> that was fantastic! <laughs> Thanks for asking. Yeah, no problem. Glad, glad, glad you enjoyed it. So we've set some just plain old magnesium rods on fire. We set some off with thermite using other bits of magnesium. Now I think we should check our foundry because we have some melting right now. Let's see how that's doing. When we take the lid off, a lot of oxygen is suddenly going to get into that furnace and that will probably be enough to ignite these. Here's what happened. Grant, when he was trying to develop the backyard foundry in the first place, he got all of these from some metal scrapyard. They both the person selling it to him and he thought they were aluminum and then he'd come home and he'd try melting it and he'd just melting and be like, oh, it looks like it's melting. Then he'd take the lid off and take the crucible out and the whole thing would light on fire. And he was very confused for a while because he didn't know why aluminum was doing that. Turns out it's because it was magnesium the whole time and now we're doing it on purpose. So, good chance this will light on fire when Callie takes the lid off. All right, so far so good. It's not on fire yet. It's seeming like it's some sparks. Magnesium oxide around the top. 
Oh, that's so pretty. Now it's on fire. <laughs> All right. You have a tiny star. Holy cow. That's quite possibly one of the prettiest things I've ever seen. Oh, and it's just getting brighter. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> this is the best day of my life. Cool, we're good to go. Our dry ice is ready, so is our melted magnesium, and Nate is prepared with the power washer. That's not comforting at all. Nate! It's fine. I'm gonna pour this and run before he kills me with that. <laughs> pour it all. There, you got a lot in there. Sure do. I don't wanna get that close. <laughs> That's amazing. Woo! Yeah, I think it's better without. Wow, that was like pouring out sunlight. That was just when it went beautiful. right into that carbon dioxide, just glowing. If a storm can be described as glowing, this was a glowing storm. This is dry ice, but the magnesium oxide, it's still giving off heat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah so that's very warm right here. <laughs> the dry ice, of course, is cold. But the general area. The area surrounding it, the ambient temperature is incredibly warm. That's awesome. Nate. Yep. Nate, I need to do the, the outro. Yep. Nate. Guys, that was really fun. Click up there to see our latest video and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you then. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs>